Hi friends, today we are going to see an application of a multi-read signal processing. The very famous op uh, application of uh, multi-read signal processing is speech uh, signals. Uh, speech signals require a variety of enhancement and uh, a variety of signal processing because it is the most important signal uh, in one dimensional area. Today we are going to see such uh, one such technique which is useful in uh, analysis or in synthesis of speech signals and that technique is called as subband coding technique. So today we are going to see what do you mean by subband coding technique. Now, as you can see in the name itself, it, it says that sub bands, right? That means uh, whichever band we have, it will also have certain sub bands. Now what happens in the speech signal is many a times our ear is or our, our ear is more tuned to hear peacefully and nicely to the to the audio frequencies which are at the lower side of the spectrum and the responsivity of the ear goes low as we start uh, increasing the frequency. So the higher frequency responsivity of the ear is less than compared to the lower frequencies. Okay. So if I wanted to suppose store a signal uh, in, a, in a limited memory space, for example, uh, nowadays we are using uh, memory sticks, we are using uh, compact decks, we are using our hard disks in which there are uh, the sp space for the memory is limited in that case. So if we, uh, we will use a, a particular sampling uh, ratio suppose and, and if I uh, apply an equal coding mechanism like every sample will be coded with equal number of bits then there will be huge amount of data we need to be stored and audio signals have very minute varying uh, informations okay so uh, it, is, it is really expensive in terms of size of the memory to store the each and every bit or each and every sample of an audio signal so we need to find a technique through which we can actually reduce or compress the number of bits required to represent the same audio. For that, we need to understand the characteristics of our ear. As I told you before, that ear is more responsive to low frequencies rather than at high frequencies. So why to store a huge number of data for high frequencies? Only the required number of bits which will represent the high frequency is sufficient. We cannot totally neglect high frequency but we need to keep it without giving a uh, very high fidelity to high frequencies. We can actually use low frequencies with very high fidelity and we can reduce the fidelity uh, at high frequencies. In this way, we can actually compress the number of bits required to store or transmit an audio file. In this way only, you get various formats of audio section like WAV, MP3, and all these are different forms used to compress the audio signals. Today, we are going to see a technique called subband coding. As we have mentioned that the responsivity is high at lower frequency and it is low, the responsivity is low at higher frequency. Hence, we will give less number of bits to high frequency and a larger number of bits to the lower frequency. First, for this reason, first we need to divide the given audio signal into frequency bands, that is a lower frequency band and a higher frequency band. So basically whenever the signal will come to the input let's say my this is my uh, some song is been played or some song has been uh, processed now so I get the input as a song what I will first do it I will pass them through a low pass filter and a high pass filter 
So what will this low pass filter will do is it will pass the lower frequencies and this will pass the higher frequencies. In this channel, I will process the high frequency data and in this channel, I will process the low frequency data. I know that this data is more important than this one. But when I divide the whole spectrum, what is going to happen is division will be, let's say I'm dividing into two equal channels. So what will happen? The division will be two equal halves. Still, there will be more amount of high frequency data, which is not required. What I will do? I will go on dividing this low frequency further and further to get the lowest possible band and I will encode that lowest possible band with the highest bit and highest number of bits and the high frequency band with the lowest number of bits. We know that the high pass band or this HPF band is the highest band ever possible. That's why this band will never be divided further because we know that the least amount of bits have to be given to this band. Right. So what I'll do is I'll concentrate more on this band and I will go on dividing this band further more. That's why so that I can retrieve more and more lower component, lower frequency component from this lower LPF channel and I can encode larger number of bits to that section. Let us see how we do this. So this is the block diagram of a three level of subband coding. What we have is we got a speech signal from here. That speech signal is applied to a low pass filter to a high pass filter. I decimate that to let's say by an order of two. Okay. So the cutoff frequency must take into consideration of the low pass and the high pass part so that there will not be any aliasing because there will be spreading of the spectrum. Now, as I know that this high pass channel requires less amount of uh, bits to be encoded. That's why what I did is I have given it to the high pass filter. The high pass components are decimated, taken care by the filter that there will be no aliasing and then there will be an encoder which will code the digits. So output of this encoder will be number of bits which I will either store it or I will transmit it. Okay. Now in the low pass section whereas I divided it by two. Okay. Now I want the lowest possible co component to get the highest possible number of bits. To get the lowest possible component I need to go on bifurcating my uh, band or bifurcate the low pass channel further and further. So at the next stage, I will divide the again the low pass and high pass. Again, I know that the high pass should be given the least number of bits. That's why division by two, uh, sorry, uh, uh, reducing the sampling rate by two and encoding. Low pass is further divided into high pass, low pass and high pass. High pass again should be divided by two and encoded. High pass, if you further want to divide, you can use more number of stages. But I have used only three stages. This is stage one. It's a bigger division. Stage two, uh, uh, um, after dividing the whole section, uh, a part of a section is divided further. And in third, the part of the which has been divided is further divided. Now to visualize that, let us consider that my signal is extending from zero to pi. We know that pi represents the higher frequency side, zero represents the lower frequency side. And we take the exact center because we are dividing into two channels. So there are there is there is a possible case that I divide the whole spectrum into two halves, right? So we will divide this channel such a way that zero to pi by two is the first division. So at stage one, okay, I'll write this with red. That is stage one. At stage one, the actual division is this much. This is the high frequency side and this is the whole set is the low frequency band. Okay. So this is LPS and HPF of the stage one. Let us go to stage two. What is going to happen in stage two? I'm not now in after stage one, I'm not going to entertain HPF anymore. I'm not going to work on HPF anymore. So this section will be encoded directly with the lower number of bits. So we will not entertain uh, this band anymore now. 
Now we have to concentrate on this section that is 0 to pi by 2. So to check with the 0 to pi by 2, I will use another color. And over here we have, uh, we are at now stage 2. And on stage 2, I have a band from, let's say the division will be like this now. It will be one section will be this much. And the second section will be this much. Okay. So this will be my new HPF section. And this here is now my new LPF section. Right. So LPF section is now 0 to pi by 4. And high pass section is pi by 0, uh, pi by 4 to pi by 2. Right. So that is the HPF section. Now, I want to further divide, let's say, it's the third octave. I'm at the third stage number three and uh, I'm running out of colors, but uh, I'll try to, I try to make it more elaborative. Let's go with color red again. And now I'm at stage number three and at stage three, I have only this much that is zero two pi by eight as my low pass filter whereas from pi by 8 to pi by 4 is my high pass filter section right so you see that the first division is 0 to pi by 2 and pi by 2 to pi by pi second division was 0 to pi by 4 and pi by 4 to pi by 2 and third section was pi by 0 to pi by 8 and pi by 8 to pi by 4. Every time, whenever I do division, I will go on skipping the high pass channel and I will give the certain number of bits to that high pass channel. So here, these two blanks shows the encoders. So after the encoders, I can either connect it to a memory stick where uh, the data need to be stored or I can connect it to a given channel so that I can transmit the data. So this is a basic encoder of a subband technique. Why it is called subband? Because we are working on subbands. Or for major bands, we are dividing them into subbands and then we are encoding those subbands. That's why it is called as a subband coding technique. This is all about transmission side or encoding side. It is not always that I'm going to transmit the data. It is like encoding the data. Okay? We can store it also. Let us see. What will happen if I wanted to decode or how should be the decoder part? Because we are going to work something, then I need to rework to get the original data back, right? Now, what I'm going to receive? I'm going to receive from various channels. How many outputs I will receive? One, two, three, four, right? Okay. These two are been divided from this branch. So these two need to get combined and to get this branch, right? Now, this this one is been division of these two branches that's why i need to combine them over here finally these two have to be combined over here so whatever i use the splitter in this section in the decoding section i will use the combiner okay so you can see another section right so again we will take care of this decoder because we need it here i have decimated by a factor of two so I will there increment by a factor of 2. So interpolating, so at the input, I'm going to get number of bits. The bits are being converted to appropriate electrical signals by the decoder. The bits that the signal is been passed through a upsampler. The upsampler, we know that will create images. So we require filter. So filters will be your called as an anti-imaging filters because these two will be combined because one will be high pass bits one will be low pass bits they will get combined okay the combined signal was also the combined signal was also decimated by two so the combined signal will also be uh, interpolated by two then after interpolation of course we need a filter so there will be a filter Similar way, third branch will come from here, will get added, and this will be the final addition. So three stages of division of signal, so three stages of 
combining of signal. There we did decimation. Here we are going to do interpolation. Before decimation, we use filters. Here after interpolation, we will use filters. To avoid imaging in decoder, there to avoid the spellizing. Okay. Now, this type. So, here when I draw, have drawn this structure, okay, how it will look like is, if I am going to design a filter for the decoder part, it is really required that my filter for this should be the low pass and this should be the high pass, right? High pass should end on pi and start from pi by 2 and low pass should go from 0 to pi by 2, right? I require a very firm border between them. Is it possible to design such kind of a filter? No, it is not. To design such kind of a filter, we require the slope of the of the line to be infinite and the pole numbers will go very high. So what I need to do is, I need to actually tail them. So how will I tail them? So I can tail them by considering Let's say this is my practical low pass filter and this is my practical high pass filter. I will take care that they will submerge or they will merge with each other at pi by 2. This will be my pi. So this form of response is given by QMF which we called as quadrature mirror filter. So, subband coding is also an application of quadrature mirror filter band type. This kind of filters can be easily implemented in subband coding. So, subband coding gives you a very well compression in the number of bits due to dividing them into high, high frequency bands and low frequency bands. This is a major uh, application in speech processing. I hope that you have understood what you mean by subband coding technique. Thank you.